everyone, DJ again. Welcome back to part three of divorce, of military divorce minefields. And if you've made it this far, you're actually almost done. The hard stuff was episode two. That was really the worst of it. That's where all the numbers were. That's where things got ugly and confusing. But now you're home free. These last two are a vacation compared to that last episode. So let's move on. A lot of this is going to be kind of from the former spouse perspective uh, from this point on. Because, of course, the service member retains a lot of the service benefits, but the former spouse ends up not retaining a lot of those, so what options are there for that former spouse? And particularly we in the retirement services community have to be uh, impartial and do what's best for both sides. And that's, of course, why I'm doing this episode right now. So let's move on to the next topic. The next item in this very long article I wrote, which I decided to break up into four weekly parts, just like four weekly episodes. So this next bit is about medical and on-post benefits, installation benefits. And compared to dividing retired pay, the rest of this, like I said, is going to be very simple. There still might be some number crunching here and there. But I'm going to give you a tool that will make that very easy so you don't have to break your brain like we did in the last episode. So let's start off with a few explanations to lay the groundwork. And please forgive me, I am doing a lot of reading here. Um, That's because of some of the complexity. I'm wanting to make sure I get everything right rather than going off the top of my head. When it comes to divorces, I'll admit I am not as hard and fast in my uh, confidence because things are always so different in every state. So I did a lot more research for this episode, for the the last few, and I'm reading a lot more than I normally do. So again, please forgive me for that. Let's move on. So access to service-related benefits such as commissaries and other on-post facilities as well as TRICARE health coverage are all based on the spouse and dependents being under the service member's social security number or the sponsor's social security number in the defense eligibility and enrollment or start over, in the Defense Enrollment and Eligibility Reporting System, or DEERS. Hmm. Excuse me. Like I said uh, earlier, I'm getting over an illness, so please forgive the occasional cough or uh, the roughness of my voice. All right. So, like I said, dependents and spouses' eligibility for benefits is based on their being enrolled under a sponsor in DEERS, This access is typically terminated in the case of a divorce. So what to do? In some cases, however, the now former spouse can establish a separate account in Deers. The determining factors for this are the length of service of the member at the time of divorce, the length of the marriage, and how much those two items overlap. So, the member must have served at least 20 years by the date of divorce. The marriage must have lasted at least 20 years. And again, those two must overlap by at least 20 years. This is normally called the 20-20-20 rule. If all three of these criteria are met, then the former spouse is eligible for lifetime commissary, military exchange, uh, and other installation privileges, including TRICARE, and and that can be off-post as well, as long as the former spouse does not remarry. That's the kicker. TRICARE coverage is suspended if the former spouse remarries at any time. 
and TRICARE coverage, or TRICARE coverage is, I got ahead of myself, TRICARE coverage is suspended if the former spouse it becomes covered under an employer-provided health care plan, but it can resume if that coverage is lost. TRICARE coverage is terminated if the former spouse remarries and on-post privileges are suspended. <coughs> suspended means there's a chance of it coming back, of course. So if that new marriage ends or the new spouse dies, then the on-post privileges can be resumed, but TRICARE will not. That has been lost. So, something to consider uh, when you're going through uh, your many, many decisions in life. <coughs> Another version of the uh, 2020 uh, rule, uh, often called the 2020-15 rule, allows for one year of transitional TRICARE coverage if the service member served at least 20 years, the marriage lasted at least 20 years, and the overlap of those two was at least 15, but less than 20 years. So if that happens, then it's one year of TRICARE to help you get through the transition and find your own sort of health insurance coverage, but there is no access to on-post facilities included in this option. <clears throat> so, if neither of these two options are available to the former spouse, there is actually a premium-based transitional health care coverage option available that can be purchased. This coverage, called the Continued Health Care Benefit Program, or CHCBP, we love our acronyms, don't we? Uh, this is available for a limited time meaning you can only have it for a certain amount of time, not that it's going away. And it can only apply to people, that are me, uh, and can apply to people other than just the former spouse. Uh, so I've got a table that I'm going to post in the uh, article version of this, um, of this episode. Uh, so if you want to see the table, go look at the website on Friday. But I'm only going to read the uh, dependent spouse uh, or child option here, or the unremarried former spouse. Everything else you can check on Friday. For both of these individuals, the scenario that would make them eligible for CHCBP is the loss of TRICARE coverage, in this case through divorce. In this case, the Unremarried former spouse is eligible to purchase this type of health care coverage for up to 36 months. CHCBP is basically a TRICARE standard under another name. So you're purchasing that type of coverage. The premiums are paid quarterly, as are co-pays and deductibles. You can get more information about CHCBP from the Humana Military website, or you can call their phone number, which is 800-444-5445. The CHCBP program offers individual and family rate plans. The costs are also in the article. I'll go ahead and read those since it's a short table. If a former spouse must apply for this coverage, though, it is not automatic, as are so many things. People always seem to assume something's automatic to their detriment. So the first quarter's premium has to be paid at the time of enrollment. For an individual, the quarterly premium is $1,425. For a family, the quarterly premium is $3,210. That's basically the unsubsidized cost of TRICARE standard. That really hits home if you have a family and you're thinking about the value of your TRICARE coverage. It's worth a little over $1,000 a month, as you can see here. And though, please be aware, those premiums can change every year. They often do. 
So just be prepared for that mm-hmm. in your budgeting. <clears throat> so like I said, you have to apply for this and pay for that first quarter up front. As I implied earlier, the former spouse must establish a separate record in Deers, and the former spouse should report the divorce to a Deers office immediately. Don't let this go unreported, and don't expect the former, uh, don't expect your former spouse, the service member, to do it. In fact, what spurred me to make this series of episodes was talking with a former spouse who divorced her husband in 2008, and he never reported himself as being divorced. Why? Because he said, well, I'll, I'll clean it up, but he said, whether she's listed on my account or not is her problem. I'm not taking her off. Makes no sense to me, but it did tend to mess things up on her side because she was trying to get her own affairs squared away in years and couldn't do that because of this other person. In fact, since I'm not giving names, I can tell you the situation. She had married another service member who 10 years later passed away. She was trying to get herself set up as her own sponsor in Deers. After getting the survivor benefit plan annuity set up, she needed her own ID card as well and couldn't get it because she was still showing as a spouse under this other guy's account. And he refused to remove her. So there was a way to fix that, but we had to go through some extra hoop jumping to make that happen. But anyway, that's what made me think, time to do the divorce series. Let's get some info out there and let me rant a little bit about this case so hopefully there will not be others like it. By the way, if you are a service member who is divorced and you do not remove the former spouse from your account, that is considered fraud. So keep that in mind. All right, back to this. So the former spouse needs to report the divorce while setting himself or herself up as his own sponsor. Keep in mind that decrees of legal separation do not count as divorces to the military or deers. That still counts as time married. So if you're a deers operator or someone out there doing a computation to see if someone meets the 2020-20 or 2020-15 rule, count the time of legal separation as if it were married. All right. Now, as you have all noticed throughout this last year, I am a number junkie. I like to develop little things that make life easier for people who are not number junkies. So, for 2020-20 rule and 2020-15 calculations, I've developed a relatively simple Excel-based calculator to make calculation of these eligibility rules pretty simple. Pretty easy. Um, I'm, in fact, if you look at the article version of this, uh, I have a screen capture of the entire calculation. It's mostly just colors. Um, and if you know how I make spreadsheets, if, if anything has a color to it, that means you leave it alone. You leave it alone, because that's where the formulas are, and you only put values into the white shaded areas. So, when you look at this, it it actually doesn't look that bad when you notice that there are very few areas where you can actually input information. And I make it even easier to identify because I'll put enter value in a green shaded cell next to wherever you need to put information. So in this calculator, there are essentially Say for this example, da, 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 there are eight areas where you put information. You put the service member's name, the former spouse's name, the date of marriage, 
the date of divorce. That's half of it right there. And the rest of this is just entering start and end dates for the service members' periods of military service. And if you do that, then down at the bottom, it gives you a summation of all the different types of service, whether it overlaps with the marriage or not, and what the final outcome for that former spouse would be. I've got a link to this calculator in the show notes. It will be available whether you're listening to the podcast version, the YouTube version, or reading the article that I'm posting. Uh, all three will have a link to this calculator. Uh, I do ask if you use it, then leave the remark in the header that says it was designed by rcretirement.com. Other than that, you're free to make use of this calculator. Um, there is one statement on the calculator, uh, which I have in here by default. I forgot to take it out. Uh, it says values displayed are in 2018 dollars. Well, there are no dollar values on here, so you can ignore that. Other than that, I think this will be a, a, a useful little tool. Uh, if you, if your security settings on your computer disable macros in spreadsheets, then please enable them for this spreadsheet because that's how the thing works. So, like I said, this will make things pretty easy. Let me uh, just go through the example that I have on here. And don't worry, this isn't like last week. This isn't a bunch of hard numbers. So, the member married uh, his spouse on 16th February 1991 and divorced his spouse on 28 March 2008. In fact, these are the actual numbers from that case that I mentioned earlier. The member had two periods of service, one from 17 June 1985 to 16 January 1991. That happened before the marriage. And another period of service from 22 March 1992 to 29 July 2016. The total service for that member was 29.96 years. So there's point one, 20 years of service, already met. The length of marriage was 17.13 years. So that's a, that's a ding. She did not have 20 years of service, excuse me, of service. And the overlap of the marriage and military service was 16.03 years. So in this case, the 2020 rule and the 2015 rule have not been met in either case. But the length of marriage, well, you know, while there was enough military service, the length of marriage was too short. You know, there is sufficient service and marital time, though, you know, if she has a division of his retired pay for the pay center, be it DFAS or another pay center, to do direct deposit of that division. And down at the bottom, you'll see in red, yellow, or green uh, shaded cells you know, what the outcomes are for the former spouse. All right. Wow, we've already gone almost 20 minutes now. So I think that's enough of my ranting about other benefits, particularly the 2020-20 rule and how that works. So thank you, as always, for being with me this week. I do ask that if you find this useful, that you hit that share button and send this information out to others who can also make use of it. If you are new to this channel, then, of course, I ask that you hit that subscribe button. If you're listening out there in podcast land, then hit subscribe as well. Let's talk every week. And if you're out there in podcast land, go by iTunes and write a one or two sentence review of what you hear here. Let other people think, you know, know what you think about this podcast. If you're on YouTube and watching this in video form, then, you know, drop some comments in the comments section. Hit the like button. Tell others about this channel. You know, let, let's grow the audience and get more people listening and seeing, you know, this information. 
you know, in everyone learning from it. The whole point of this is education. So just get more people, more eyeballs, and more ears you know, you know, on this material. As always, I do appreciate you being part of this audience and, and helping me slowly bring this thing over the last year. Um, this has been quite uh, an interesting journey so far, and uh, it only seems to be getting better. So, as always, thank you for being here. Thank you for being part of this audience. Thank you for your service. And let's join me next week as we finish off this series on military divorces. Thank you very much.